Hi, my name is Andrew Quitmeyer. I'm a digital media student at Georgia Tech, um, and I'm studying what I call digital naturalism. And today I'm here to talk to you about uh, my product, Mark Your Territory. Uh, so first, I would like to kind of give you the quick product overview and pitch. Then I'll talk a bit more about uh, the product's rhetoric and overall design. Just a quick little bit about me and my background. I've been studying digital media at Georgia Tech, but I've also been simultaneously working in a robotics lab that focuses on studying animal behavior uh, in order to hopefully re-emulate these behaviors within robotics. Anyway, the core studies of my focus at Georgia Tech are between performance art, ethology, the study of animal behavior, and using digital media uh, in between these two. The interconnecting component of all these three fields is their sort of primary affordance that they are all procedural or behavioral mediums. So you have on the ethology robotics side, uh, you tend to view animals and other organisms that are non-human uh, as having some sort of uh, encoded programming that's black boxed and we have to experiment with them in order to try to figure out what their underlying software is. Then on the performance studies side, uh, you have people like Richard Schechner, who also looks at ethology and animal behavior studies, claiming that any performance is just the restoration of some sort of other behavior, the restoration or manipulation of these older behaviors that we're playing with. And finally, you have uh, in the digital media side that I'm kind of trying to use to link these together, you have what Ian Bogos would call the principal value of computing or computational media would be uh, processes. The ability of the computer to very rapidly uh, enact and reenact uh, processes that the humans are able to give these. So I'm trying to use digital media to help humans explore the animal world and also to help animals uh, convey more information back to us. Uh, so that's kind of where I'm coming from. And so now how about I tell you about my product, Mark Your Territory. So in the world, you have organisms, these wonderful self-sustaining physical behavioral feedback loops. Uh, and you also have these places. Uh, parts of the environment where these organisms live, interact with each other, and obtain their nutrition. Now obviously, uh, these places are very important to organisms. So over millions of years, these organisms of all different kinds have developed many various methods of trying to stake claim, uh, cast ownership upon certain places. So in general, the means of communication that developed by most of the organisms came in the form of somewhat universal information messages that are primarily uh, physically based. There you go, that's a good dog. Oh. Goodness. So as you can see from how all these creatures are territorializing their space, in physical marking of territory, there are specific affordances that come with this particular brand of semaphore. Of course, uh, it doesn't have to be pee. Many animals use other non-urinary modes of uh, physical marking or semiochemical dispersion methods, like ejecting pheromones, chiromones, alimones, uh, through other glands of the body. Um, but for this talk, we'll just use P as a kind of shorthand for sem semiochemical communication in general. So one of these affordances is obviously it's very location specific, uh, with an incredibly high spatial resolution. A thing proves that it was in a place because it had to have actually been at this place. Um, it had to be in this territory to leave the sign it was there. There are many other additional important features of this communication though too. Um, first, there's the universal accessibility of situated chemicals. Um, unlike digital communication that only humans can access, 
These chemicals can permit communication across transspecial boundaries. Um, organisms to whom it was necessary developed the ability to detect and decipher the smells of other inhabitants of the area. The ephemeral nature of physical objects also gives it the ability to share knowledge of how well an ownership of a territory has been maintained. Did a squirrel just happen to stop by here pee once, maybe many months ago? Or is it refreshing its mark um, daily or hourly? Or is the squirrel there right now? One of the most interesting aspects of semiochemical communication in the real world, uh, which is quite non-existent in the digital social realm uh, that humans tend to participate in, is the ability to leave unbiased profiles. Uh, a wolf marking a tree, for instance, not only shares the self-originating information of like, this is my tree, um, the wolf also leaves uncontrollable information uh, in this area about itself. Um, the chemistry of animal marks can reveal to other creatures uh, important facts about this animal that the animal had no say in how it was leaving these, this information, such as uh, that animal's physiology, uh, its diet, uh, its mood uh, at the time that it left its mark, uh, and also it's uh, what stage it's at in its mating cycle. Is that wolf ready to mate? Um, is there potential mates in this area for me? Um, in the digital world, this type of information has to be typically curated by the person yourself. Anything about you in a profile online, you have to type in manually yourself. Nothing gets really just absorbed uh, from the physical world uh, with some sort of unbiased truth. And it's these kind of mistruths that can lead to, you know, many online dating mix-ups. <laughs> Long after the development of this rich mode of communication between the species, humans began to develop new means of sending high bandwidth precision messages that shifted our sensorial attention away from the world and onto each other. The advent of humanity's languages culminating with uh, the creation of the digital world, gave us this leg up in survival, letting us plan, collaborate, share, and access past knowledge. In making this shift, though, we sacrifice the robustness of communication with a whole slew of creatures inhabiting our environment for very precise and targeted uh, sharing of information through language, and this is even further exacerbated uh, through the advent of digital communication. Sometimes, however, systems within our humans-only digital environment attempt to blindly mimic the evolutionarily developed communication systems that are used by the rest of the world. So instead of utilizing the system of affordances developed since the dawn of life, um, this is our new means of taking ownership of a place. This is my McDonald's. Foursquare works as a sort of exemplar program for tying digital information to physical venues, along with other services like Google's Latitude or Facebook's check-ins. Foursquare claims to serve as a means of letting one explore your world around you, but it primarily functions as a way for users to compete over real-world locales uh, in order to collect virtual and sometimes real-life rewards, such as pricing discounts. In the technical side, this competition in Foursquare boils down to users sharing low-accuracy GPS data, along with the Foursquare ID of a Foursquare-designated nearby venue to a centralized database. This constitutes a check-in, which can be made an unlimited amount of times throughout the day, um, but only one check-in per day per venue will actually count towards any rewards. The person with the most check-ins at the location in the past 60 days is rewarded the title of mayor of this online venue. In this way, Foursquare tries to simulate the ephemeral and maintenance qualities of marking territory physically that we discussed, but in a sort of arbitrary fashion um, with a lower temporal resolution. Foursquare has many other anti-cheating controls, but these can be simply circumvented by uh, manipulating the API yourself 
um, or checking in falsely through the mobile version of their site. Um, also, unlike the real world, the proximity of two venues in physical space is rendered irrelevant, and the only spaces that matter are specific commercial establishments or the sometimes fake user-defined venues. So the homeless person living behind a McDonald's stands no chance at ever wrestling away the mayorship from an actual Foursquare user, um, despite actually being at the location, or at least nearby the location, every day. The success of applications like Foursquare comes from this novel pairing of a single element of the real world, uh, low resolution GPS data, with the affordances of traditional digital media social uh, networks. Merely just adding in this low resolution locational data, however, disembodies the user and tends to encourage breakdowns of the rule space within this game. Alternative design strategies that are built upon proven ownership systems, such as those found in nature, could circumvent these shortcomings. This is why I created Mark Your Territory. Mark Your Territory is a rhetorical prototype. Uh, it encourages an analysis of how one can improve the flow of information between the physical and digital realms. It's not perfect, nor does it solve all the issues I brought up earlier, but here's how it works. Individuals carry around enhanced business cards. The sharp appendage, modeled after gardening plant identifiers, lets you literally stake a claim to a very specific portion of the world. In harder urban environments, you can also use the adhesive backing to do so. Once marked, the targets need to be activated in order to express the gradient of ownership that you are willing to expend at this location. Initially, the card says little information about the owner, such as just Andy was here. But as you pee onto the center of the card, the water-soluble silver gouache rubs off to reveal a QR code that can link users to much more specific information about you as a person, so they know exactly who is here claiming this. The amount of pee that you release in the environment is also detected by the moisture sensing probe connected directly to your smartphone. This probe serves as a literal bridge between the physical and digital worlds. At the beginning of filing your claim, the Free Mark Your Territory app digitally offsets your GPS coordinates infinitely far away from your real world location. And it's only through the amount and duration of your urination that it decreases this offset and places you virtually closer to the venue. The app also leaves digital comments ranking your check-ins so that the rest of the world knows about your performance. As in nature, the quality of your act influences several characteristics of your claim to this territory. Depending on one's volume, focus, and aim, uh, your dedication to the venue, others will know digitally and physically the condition of your mark. These features establish a check-in gradient where ownership can be evaluated on a spectrum as opposed to Foursquare's binary, you're here or you're not system. To recapture the ability of having unbiased profiles that I mentioned were able to be found in nature, um, each marker is pH sensitive and changes color to reflect your own personal physiognomy. Um, typically, this corresponds to your choice of either vegetarian or meat-eating lifestyles. And so you can have effects where uh, while you walk into a restaurant, you can examine all the markers and determine uh, what type of people this restaurant typically serves, or what kind of people dine there. The biodegradable nature of these markers reproduces the ephemerality of physical marks, which must be constantly maintained to express your ownership. Furthermore, in the real world, any physical change to the environment has a much longer lasting, implicit effect on the environment as a whole. Within each marker, person-specific, moisture-activated seeds are embedded inside, which will grow and battle the markers of others as somewhat living avatars of the past user's presence. Thus, one could tell that Andy had been frequenting a venue for years because of all the tomato plants living in the area, but that recent batches of fennel in the region indicate more visits by Susan recently. In future implementations of Mark Your Territory, I would want these plants to be perennial and also feature genetically embedded watermarks. These marks could contain the exact same information as the QR code and could direct future explorers to knowledge about the region's historical ownership. People hundreds of years in the future could be walking through the forest with their genetic scanners and learn that 
Long time ago, in the ruins of this ancient McDonald's, a person named Andrew Quitmire frequently made claims to this area between such and such a time period. Since this product uses actual pee, it also has the advantage that animals can use it too. You can have your dog digitally and physically check into places for itself. The other effect is that not only can animals input information into the digital world, animals can learn from all the pee that's left over from people doing their virtual Foursquare check-ins, um, how often different people or other people's pets are visiting this area. So in this way, neighboring animals who usually have nothing to do with Foursquare um, can implicitly learn of happenings in the digital environment. On the technical side of things, the functionality of the system comes from a combination of an Android app with a custom firmware running on the Arduino Mega ADK. The ADK is a special microcontroller compatible with Google's recently released uh, Open Accessory Development Platform, which uh, can link real-world sensing and manipulation to entities in the digital world through your Android smartphone. Every aspect of this project is open source and design and code is available freely at the markyourterritory.org website. Another technical note is that some people worry that the system is potentially limited to only use by males, but uh, females can also use the device via several different techniques uh, and even with uh, additional devices like uh, the Go Girl. Through its initial demonstration and uses, Mark Your Territory has functioned well as a provocative artifact for opening up the discussion of territoriality in the modern digital and physical worlds. It succeeds in posing questions concerning our relationship to checking in over a longer biologically oriented time frame. And most of all, it uses tangible and physical interaction to present an alternative design philosophy to the disembodiment that dominates the schema of current social media. Given the amount of other related behavior that's ripe for this type of hybrid uh, digital physical investigation, this kind of process and behavior based design, inspired by but not explicitly mimicking animals, might offer a fruitful approach for exploring tangible and embodied interaction design at large. So please continue uh, to discuss, uh, ask me questions, uh, and I would love to hear feedback and your criticisms, comments, and ideas. Thank you.